Hello and welcome to this health supplier segment here on Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Glad that you could join us. Our guest is Dr. Albert Shaw. He's a PhD and co-founder of Arteris. Here to talk about Arteris suite of applications for clinicians via their cloud-based web-enabled AI medical imaging platform. Welcome to the program, doctor. How are you? Uh, very good. Thank you. Now, I mentioned that you are the co-founder of Arteris. Uh, give us just a brief background about yourself as a MD and PhD. Yeah, I'm I'm a assistant professor here in radiology at uh, UC San Diego. Uh, I do primarily cardiovascular and thoracic imaging, uh, a lot of CT and MRI. Uh, I, I'm a MD PhD, as you said, I'm here um, trained actually also at UCSD in uh, bioengineering and bioinformatics, mm -hmm. and uh, had a background in computer science and engineering from Caltech before I came here, um, and and. Uh, I did my uh, clinical training after all that uh, at uh, uh, in at Stanford in general surgery and uh, radiology. Now, as co-founder of Arteris, what is it about your company that sets it apart from other similar companies? If there are other companies, what drove you to co-found this company, and what are they involved in? Yeah, Arteris is a really unusual company. We have um, a very close relationship between uh, two clinical co-founders, myself and my mentor from Stanford, Shreyas Vasanawala, um, in, and we've been uh, closely involved in a lot of um, product development for um, improving the software that we use to analyze medical images. Um, I think uh, that's that's been an essential piece of it to try to develop more clinically useful technologies that um, can capitalize on all the computational power that we have now available to us. Is there one type of uh, imaging that you focus on over another? Or are you improving software as it relates to any type of imaging? Well, we got our start um, with a software for 4D flow MRI, a special technology that lets us uh, look at the uh, structure of the heart and the blood flow within it. Um, that was a technology that when I was a resident up at Stanford, we really spent a lot of time trying to develop into something that we could use clinically. Uh, Shreyas had, had developed a lot of um, insights with uh, something called compressed sensing, uh, which allowed us to accelerate the um, MRI uh, dramatically so that we could scan it in about 10 minutes. Uh, and I had spent a lot of time on computer uh, graphics and, uh, and user interactive uh, technologies. So we decided to try to combine the two and develop some really nice software for, for analyzing that data. Uh, that technology we ended up um, turning into something we used every day clinically uh, over the course of my uh, clinical training there at Stanford. And uh, we, we built that uh, as the, some of the foundational software that led to Arteris being founded. Talk about some of the challenges that Arteris has been able to overcome for both patients and providers when it comes to imaging. Well, yeah, so I think uh, there's a lot of, uh, as, uh, as the software for, um, well, maybe I should take a step back. Um, the, the imaging technologies that we have available to us are, really fantastic. CT and MRI are uh, constantly evolving, uh, constantly uh, finding new ways to capture more information uh, about um, many diseases, about cancer, about um, uh, a cardiac uh, function and cardiac disease. So what we're finding clinically is that we capture so much data, we're not able to fully utilize it uh, in our daily practice. Um, I, I probably only use, it's sort of like uh, you use 10% of your brain uh, uh, for, for cognitive function. We, we, we're only scratching the surface of what's actually in the images themselves uh, So uh, in our daily practice. And so what we've been trying to do and what we've been uh, fairly successful at is uh, building software technologies that help us drill down into the most essential parts of uh, that, those imaging technologies. But what about the patient experience? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so what's amazing about uh, the technologies that we're doing, uh, building is that they, they're they not only able to give us more information, but we are able to now uh, scan patients in far less time. Uh, the traditional MRIs for the heart used to take roughly an hour or two, depending on uh, uh, how complex the exams were. 
And uh, nowadays, I can usually get most of the information with uh, the new technology in uh, maybe 20, uh, 20, 30 minutes. I know that uh, sometimes imaging involves uh, anesthesia, depending on um, uh, the, the procedure. Is that still something that uh, has to take place using your, uh, your deep learning algorithms? No, yeah. So that's, you know, uh, it's an important thing that, that the things that we do are not only advance the the, the technology or, and the amount of information that we're able to capture, but uh, what we've been able to do in the pediatric setting is uh, a lot of our uh, kids with congenital heart disease, uh, we've been able to remove the need for general anesthesia because we were able to scan so fast. In our adult patients, they, they notice because they're instead of being there for two hours, they really... Uh, they're basically finished in half an hour, and then they kind of ask me, oh, I, usually these take longer. What happened? How come we did it uh, th- did such a short exam? I know that uh, we're, we're talking about software. We're talking about uh, cloud-based, web-based uh, applications here. What about uh, the patient privacy? Always a huge concern with patients, whether a uh, young adult or someone uh, up in years. How does uh, Arteris navigate that complex aspect of uh, patient information when it comes to imaging? Yeah, it's a really essential piece of things. I think we all try to be careful with the data that we've had the privilege to um, to work with. Um, uh, we, we have a dedicated system that uh, we've built surrounding uh, protected health information where we um, make sure that the, the identifying information is locked in a secure vault and separate it from the images that we use to process and analyze. Uh, uh, so the protected health information can be secured either within uh, the hospital itself where it came from or in a secure vault in the cloud. So I think that both, uh, both systems are, are um, good options for different kinds of hospitals, but that, that's basically the central um, tenet of what we do is, is sort of like a physician's uh, role is to do no harm um, and benefit their patients. We, we kind of want to protect that information in the same, uh, with the same mindset. Talk about the support that you offer facilities as they transition from their current imaging technology and upgrade to arterist applications. I think uh, changing anything, um, uh, especially changing how doctors behave and what doctors use for their diagnosis is a challenging thing because uh, we, um, we we tend to be set in our ways. Um, but I think um, uh, there's more openness to the cloud uh, nowadays than, um, than there used to be. A lot of our electronic medical records have also shifted towards the cloud. Um, but I think um, once uh, once people have uh, tried it, they they begin to realize the flexibility that they have. I I've done some of my analyses of our cardiac MRIs or CTs uh, from across the country. Um, I've had referrals from uh, groups in France and in um, other uh, places around the world where uh, specific questions get asked, and I'm able to to help them um, without having to leave my house. So. I think that's um, a, a one remarkable thing. Um, it works just as well whether I'm um, uh, at the site or if I'm uh, far across the country. Well, give us a website where our listeners can go and learn more about Arteris and about your uh, suite of applications. So Arteris.com um, is our main site, and it lists a, a number of our different applications, the cardiac suite, uh, the liver oncology, and uh, lung uh, suites as well. So I think um, they, they can certainly learn more about uh, the whole cloud platform and all, all the applications that are being developed by the company. Dr. Xiao, thank you for joining us on the program today. Thank you very much. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio, this health supplier segment with Dr. Albert Xiao. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Transcripts and audio available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. Thank you for listening to Health Professional Radio. We're very proud to be an independent broadcaster providing our content free of charge to you, the listener. One of the ways that we're able to remain free and independent is by having people like you become patrons. You can support Health Professional Radio simply by visiting hpr.fm and clicking the button that says Become a Patron. Your patronage of even just $1 a month lets us know that you're there, which in turn makes us more valuable to advertisers. 
And, of course, if you're able to afford more, then we would certainly appreciate the support. My name is Toby Longhurst from Health Professional Radio. Please visit hpr.fm, click the Become a Patron button, and support us if you can.